Hello friends, welcome to my channel Clinical Biochemistry by Dr. P.K. Prabhakar. Today I am going to talk about magnesium and this is the sixth lecture in this series of minerals. So where we will talk about the uh, magnesium, its uh, sources, its uh, RDA value, functions, regulations and some of the abnormality related to magnesium. Uh, so this is the uh, normal uh, basic uh, characteristic calcium properties of the magnesium where we will see the magnesium. Uh, its atomic number is 12 uh, normally it's a symbol uh, we are going to have me and uh, when we are talking about the electronic configurations we are writing the nearest uh, uh, inert gas composition and then we are writing the thing uh, these are the chemical properties of magnesium where we will see atomic number 12 atomic weight is 24.30 a uh, melting point boiling point density normally it's a common most uh, uh, commonly present uh, oxidation state is plus 2 and it is a one of the alkaline earth metal. Uh, so if you will see the basic properties of magnesium, magnesium is an element which is uh, falling into the alkaline earth metal group and it is belonging to the group 2 that is 2A of the periodic table and it is uh, lightest structural element or metal. Uh, the uh, its compound or magnesium compounds are widely used in the construction of medicines and magnesium is one of the uh, element which is essential for almost all the cells. Uh, there are number of different uh, uh, type of functions in our cells. We will see later on in details. Uh, magnesium, if you see, it is present in the three different kind of uh, isotopic forms, uh, which is magnesium twenty four. Uh, more maximum we are having 79 percent magnesium 24 is present then magnesium 26 which is roughly 11 percent and magnesium 25 that is roughly 10 percent so uh, 24 25 26 but if you will go on the percentage occurrence so 24 maximum 79 percent 26 11 percent and 25 10 percent and there are 19 different radioactive isotopes have been prepared uh, which is magnesium 28 um, then number of other things magnesium is the eighth most abundant element in the earth crust and roughly it is going to constitute 2.5 percent of the earth crust constructions and uh, after aluminium and iron this is the third most plentiful uh, structural metal ions in our body roughly we are having 20 gram of magnesium in our body out of this 20 gram 70 percent of this 20 gram is present <clears throat> uh, in the bones along with the calcium and phosphorus. So uh, maximum 70 percent that is roughly 14 gram is present in bone and uh, uh, teeth or different other uh, solid portions and the remaining 30 percent is present in the soft tissue and the body fluids. So this is the distribution uh, 14 gram roughly into the bones and seven six grams into the soft tissue we are having when we are talking about the physiological role of magnesium in our body uh, magnesium is required for the formation of bone and teeth that's why we are having 70 percent in the bones and teeth and roughly that is constituting uh, 14 gram almost magnesium ion is one of the essential or necessary for the proper functioning of neuromuscular functions whenever we are having uh, magnesium deficiency uh, neuromuscular irritability occurs and uh, low amount of magnesium leads to neuromuscular irritability magnesium ion is an activator for co or cofactor for more than 600 enzymes some of the enzymes where magnesium works as a cofactor are hexokinase glucokinase phosphofructokinase adenylate cyclase and number of other enzymes so more than 600 enzymes this magnesium works as a cofactor role almost all the enzymes which uses ATP as a substrate or ATP as a cofactor or also allosteric regulators requires magnesium ion for their activity. Then uh, if we will say magnesium is a highly critical element in the nucleus where it interacts with uh, DNA uh, and this interaction of the DNA normally it is going to establish the structure of DNA. So for the DNA stability we require magnesium ion. Then uh, some of the nuclear enzymes which also requires magnesium for their activity and these enzymes which re uh, present requires magnesium ion and present in the nucleus, uh, they normally involve in the DNA repair system like uh, different endonuclease enzymes, uh, topoisomerase 2 or guidase enzymes. Then we are having 
RNA is H, uh, which is uh, normally going to degrade RNA. So these are the different uh, uses of magnesium in our body. Other than this one, magnesium is also required for protein synthesis since it is necessary for the stabilization of the ribosomes. Because the ribosomes is the protein factory and once ribosome will be more stable, obviously more protein or better protein synthesis will be there. So for protein synthesis uh, translation process, we require magnesium. Not only this one, magnesium is also involved in the signal transduction for uh, through neurons. It is important in the process of electrolyte transportations, uh, electrolyte movements uh, across the plasma membrane uh, for glucose uptake and their metabolic processes. It also involves in ATP productions via oxidative phosphorylation into the mitochondrial inner, inner membrane and it's uh, functioning for nerve transmission via stabilization of ATP in sodium potassium ATPH. And uh, it, another critical function of magnesium in the formation of mineral matrix of bone. So overall, if you'll say uh, magnesium is essential for all living cells as it is involved in the uh, most of the critical important biological uh, polyphosphate compounds like where DNA will be, DNA we have seen, RNA we have seen, protein synthesis we have seen, adenylate, ATP we have seen. Many enzymes also depends on the uh, magnesium ions. About one sixth add plentiful as potassium in human body cells. Magnesium is required as a catalyst for more than 600 enzymes, which just now we have seen it. And not only this, one, if we talk about the plants, magnesium is an essential constituent of the green pigment chlorophyll, uh, which is roughly present in almost all the plants, algae, and cyanobacteria. The photosynthetic function of plants depends on the action of chlorophyll pigments, which contains magnesium at the center of the complex. That is the nitrogen containing ring porphyrin. In our case, in our blood, we are having hemoglobin. Similarly, uh, porphyrin ring contain, which contains nitrogen, there we are having magnesium. And these magnesium compounds normally enables light energy to drive the conversion of the carbon dioxide and water into the glucose. So there uh, in the chlorophylls also we have magnesium which helps in the photosynthetic reaction, the photosynthesis processes. If we'll uh, talk about the magnesium RDA value uh, due at the time of at the birth or till from birth to six months, we require roughly 30 mg uh, in case of male and female. As aging is going on, uh, its concentration, its body requirement slowly increases and uh, it can go up to 420 mg, up to 420 mg. If you will see that during lactation, pregnancy or lactations, normally uh, their concentration is slightly increased. Like if you will see, in case of female who is non-pregnant, the requirement will be 360 mg per day. Uh, and in case of pregnancy, it's going up to 400 mg. Uh, similarly, in case of if age is 19 to 30, require normal uh, non-pregnant women require 310 mg. Pregnant women require 350 mg. Similarly, 31 to 50 years of uh, women, which is non-pregnant, require 320. Pregnant requires 360. So, uh, this is the RDA value and if you'll see magnesium because of these things only uh, it is uh, not the micro minerals yet yeah, trace element magnesium is one of the principal element or main element why because our requirement is more than 100 mg per day so normally uh, you might have seen or in my first video on the minerals uh, where we have talked about how we are going to call it trace element or the principal element if any minerals requirement every day is less than 100 mg per day, we are going to call it trace element. But magnesium requirement, if you'll see, more than 100 mg per day is there. That's why it is not the trace element, it is the principal element. So on an average, if you'll see, uh, adult men requires 350 mg per day, adult women require roughly 300 mg per day. The major sources of uh, mineral, means, uh, magnesium is uh, wheat bran, almonds, spinach, cashew, uh, soya bean, oatmeal, peanuts, uh, brown rice, black rice peas. Uh, so these are the different uh, food sources uh, which uh, is the rich source of magnesium. When we are talking about the absorption, uh, magnesium is absorbed by the intestinal cells uh, through the specific carrier system. Roughly about 50% of the dietary magnesium is normally absorbed. And 50% is going to be excreted through the feces. 
consumption of large amount of calcium phosphate and alcohol normally going to affect its absorption so whenever we are having high amount of calcium phosphate or alcohol in our diet or in our food the absorption process of magnesium will be reduced and low magnesium absorption will take place other than that one a parathyroid hormones pth also increases the magnesium absorption like calcium uh, normal serum concentration of magnesium is roughly 2 to 3 mg per d dl and it is present in the ionized forms in 60 percent cases uh, or other than uh, it is also going to be combined with other ions in 10 percent cases uh, or 10 percent concentration and bond with the other proteins that is 30 percent if you'll see the different functions of magnesium in our body uh, so it normally helps in the uh, relax a smooth muscles so these are the which is into the elliptical uh, boxes they are the major functions so uh, it is working as a calcium blotter blocker blocker it regulates the heart contractibility uh, it helps in the vasodilation it also regulates calcium level it relax skeletal muscles it is laxative in actions and it relaxes the smooth muscles and whatever we are going to see in the uh, rectangular boxes these are the normally its magnesium deficiency leads to this type of abnormality like a migraine in case of brain it is going to affect brain so there it's going to cause migraine cns injury neurodegenerative disease disorder epilepsy in case of pancreas because insulin production their function glucose metabolic process will be affected so it leads to diabetes mellitus in case of muscles it causes muscle cramps when we are talking with the reproductive system it is uh, pre uh, menstrual syndromes uh, pre eclampsia uh, preterm birth cerebral palsy in case of bone osteoporosis in case of lungs asthma copd cystic fibrosis similarly uh, in the liver liver cirrhosis in ear normally hair loss will be there uh, in eyes cataract glaucoma will be there in case of skin atop uh, dermatitis psoriasis in kidney renal calculi in case of heart arrhythmia precalcemia hypertension heart failure myocardial infarction atherosclerosis number of disease so roughly almost if you see uh, most of the major systemic organs are going to be affected by magnesium deficiency so the magnesium deficiency normally going to cause neuromuscular irritability weakness and convulsions because uh, regulations will be affected these symptoms are very similar to the tetany uh, when we are going to have calcium deficiency and which is relieved when magnesium will be given so symptoms will be subsides other than that one malnutrition alcoholism on cirrhosis of liver may also leads to magnesium deficiency in our body the low level of magnesium may be observed during the uremia rickets and abnormal pregnant, uh, pregnancy so roughly uh, these are the different uh, important features of the uh, property rd value and of the magnesium lastly we are going to see there are number of tests by which we can detect the magnesium in our body and there are number of tests are there so when we are having the test that is called uh, red blood cell magnesium concentrations and what is its value what is its significance it is normally reflecting the actual magnesium status in our body then we are having non-invasive intracellular mineral electrolyte analysis that is exa in abbreviation it is called like. it normally detects the tissue level of magnesium we are having hair uh, mineral analysis test it indicates the overall body chemistry and health status serum magnesium level it indicates the less likely related to the body magnesium content because it represents only 0.3 percent so serum we have very we have seen that we are having 20 gram of uh, magnesium in our body but in our blood we are having only 2 to 3 mg per dl so we are having only 6 liter of blood so if you calculate it is very less not the total amount 24 hour excretion of urine or fractional excretion because urine maximum magnesium is also going to be excreted through the urine so more than 10 to 30 mg uh, excretion in 24 hour excretion or above 2 percent of the fractional excretion indicates renal wasting magnesium loading test this is for the assessment of intestinal and bone status of magnesium isotopic analysis of magnesium uh, where we are going to uh, give 20 uh, use 26 and magnesium isotopic 26 and this was used to evaluate absorption of magnesium from the GIT tract but it's limited to the research purpose and the serum magnesium or calcium quotient 
that is since uh, sensitive indicator for the magnesium status and turnover so these are the number of tests we are having by which we by different uh, magnesium level measurement we have different type of information we are getting it so this is all about the magnesium their functions their absorption their role and their diseases as well as the various tests so we hope you have understand it if you have any query any comments you can write in the comment box if you have not subscribe my channel you can subscribe it uh youtube has activated the thanks button on my youtube channel if you want to support us you can click on the thanks button you can also join uh, my channel for more information thank you very much have a nice day